Hey, welcome back to another Circuit Basics video. My name is Scott, and today I'm going to show you how to set up an ultrasonic rangefinder on your Arduino. Ultrasonic rangefinders use sound to detect the distance from the sensor to an object. The speed of sound is used to calculate the distance with the formula distance equals speed multiplied by time. With that said, the measurement that we get from the ultrasonic rangefinder is dependent on the speed of sound in air. And it turns out that the speed of sound in air is also dependent on temperature and humidity. So, in order to get an accurate calculation of the distance, we need an accurate calculation of the speed of sound, and therefore an accurate measurement of humidity and temperature. So in this video, I'll be showing you three different rangefinder circuits. One circuit doesn't take into account temperature or humidity. The next circuit only takes into account temperature. And the final circuit takes into account temperature and humidity. So that way we can get an idea of how much of an effect temperature and humidity have on our distance calculations. The ultrasonic rangefinder I'll be using in this tutorial is the HC-SR04. It's relatively inexpensive, under $10. The rangefinder has four pins, VCC, which is the five volt power pin, trigger pin, an echo pin, and a ground pin. I'm going to go more in detail on how the ultrasonic rangefinder works in an article that I wrote, which I'll link to in the description section, so be sure to check that out. But for now, I just want to demonstrate how the ultrasonic rangefinder works and the accuracy of each circuit. First, what we'll want to do is set up the ultrasonic rangefinder and connect it to the Arduino. I have an Arduino Uno here with a breadboard, and I'll begin by inserting the ultrasonic rangefinder into the breadboard. And then I'll connect a jumper wire from the trigger pin of the ultrasonic rangefinder to digital pin 10 of the Arduino. Then I'll connect another jumper wire from the echo pin of the ultrasonic rangefinder to digital pin 13 of the Arduino. Then I'll connect the ground pin of the ultrasonic rangefinder to the negative rail of the breadboard. And the VCC pin of the ultrasonic rangefinder to the positive pin of the breadboard. Finally, I'll connect the power rails of the breadboard, the positive rail to the 5 volt pin of the Arduino, and the negative rail to the ground pin of the Arduino. Okay, here's the article I was talking about. It's on our website. I go into pretty deep detail about uh, how sound travels in air and how it's affected by temperature and humidity, and also how the ultrasonic rangefinder actually transmits and receives uh, signals of ultrasonic sound. So that's worth looking at. So here's the diagram of the circuit we just connected. It doesn't take into account temperature or humidity. It's just the HC SR04. And we'll grab this program. So we'll copy that. Open up the Arduino IDE. And paste it in there. and then upload it. I also included a diagram and an example program for connecting an LCD display using the ultrasonic rangefinder. And you'll find that in the article for this video that I've linked to in the description. But for now, we'll just use the serial monitor. Here I have the ultrasonic rangefinder with a ruler out in front, and I'll be using a notebook to test the accuracy of the distance measurements. I have the notebook at 25 centimeters, and the readings I'm getting are 23 and 24. So they're a little bit off. And that's because it's hard to determine exactly where the ultrasonic rangefinder is taking the measurement from in the body of the transducers. So what we can do is we can calibrate it. And the way you do that is to just put a ruler in front of your ultrasonic rangefinder from the point that you wish the measurements to be taken from and put an object on it and determine the distance that it should be. 
Then compare that distance to the distance values that are output by the range finder and determine the difference. Then go back to the program and in the function distance equals duration divided by 2 multiplied by 0 0.0344, you simply add or subtract that difference depending on whether the distance was greater or less than the actual distance. So if your initial distances are less than the actual measured distance, you will want to add the difference. If your measured distance values are greater than the actual distance, you will want to subtract the difference. So in my case, the measured distance values were about one centimeter less than the actual distance. So now I will add one centimeter to the distance equals duration divided by two multiplied by 0 0.0344 equation. So I'm gonna add one centimeter to the end of this equation. Now placing my notebook at 27 centimeters, the measured distance is 26.8. Move it up to 23. We got 23. Moving it up to 15. We're 15.17, 15.12, we're pretty good. All right, now let's try a slightly higher accuracy ultrasonic rangefinder circuit. In this circuit, we'll be using a thermistor to get temperature, and we'll be using the speed of sound and error formula to input the temperature reading from the thermistor to calculate a more accurate value for our speed of sound, which should result in a more accurate distance measurement. We've got a diagram on how to set this up. I have a 100K thermistor and a 100K resistor. And I'll insert the thermistor into the breadboard and insert the resistor into the breadboard. This is our voltage divider. Now I'm gonna take the side of the thermistor that's not connected to the resistor and connect that to the positive rail of the breadboard. Then I'll take the side of the resistor that's not connected to the thermistor and connect that to the negative rail of the breadboard. Then I'll take the rail where the resistor and the thermistor are connected and bring that over to analog pin zero of the Arduino. Now that everything's connected, we can upload some code to the board. So I'm going to copy this. And this is all in the article that I'm linking to in the description. Open up the Arduino IDE. Paste it in. And upload it to the board. And let's check our accuracy. So I put the notebook at 23, and we're at 22.99, 22.97, that's pretty accurate. Moving it to 17, 17.2, 16.81, 17.2, it's not bad. All right, now that we've constructed our ultrasonic rangefinder circuit, taking into account temperature, now why don't we take into account humidity as well. For this circuit, we're going to be using the DHT11 humidity and temperature sensor. So if you want to learn more about the DHT11, how it works, and how to set it up, check out this other article, the DHT11 uh, humidity and temperature sensor. But in this video, we're going to be using it with the ultrasonic rangefinder. And here's a diagram for how to connect it. I'll insert the DHT11 into the breadboard. Now I'm going to connect the negative pin of the DHT11 to the negative rail of the breadboard. I'll connect the positive pin of the DHT11 to the positive rail of the breadboard. And 
and the signal pin of the DHT11 to digital pin 7 of the Arduino. Now in order to use the DHT11, you need to install a special library on your computer. It's the DHT lib library. It contains all the functions needed to calculate humidity and temperature from the resistance readings uh, provided by the DHT11. It's really easy to install. All you have to do, um, download the zip file and go to your Arduino IDE, go to the sketch drop down menu, click on include library, then add library, then navigate to where you downloaded the dhtlib.zip file and double click on that and it will install. That's that simple. Once you've installed the dhtlib file, we're ready to upload some code. So I'll just copy this, open up the Arduino IDE, paste it in there, and upload. So I'm just going to check the accuracy here. I've got a ruler in front of the ultrasonic rangefinder, and I'm going to place a notebook at 25 centimeters. And the reading I'm getting is 24.6, 24.7. Move that up to 20 centimeters. I'm getting 19.8. 6, 19.5. Moving it to 15 centimeters, I get 14.9, 15.3. That's pretty accurate by itself. I didn't need to calibrate it that time, which was interesting, but I could probably get even higher accuracy if I calibrated it. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed watching and I hope you learned something. If you liked it, please like it and share it. We could always use more viewers over here at Circuit Basics. And don't forget to subscribe because we've got a lot more videos coming out. And we hope you stay tuned. All right, talk to you later.